Hello and welcome to a very special How I Paint Things. Now with Kill Team coming up with the new release featuring Traitor Guardsmen, and these guys having been around for a little while in the Blackstone Fortress, I figured it's time I finally did something for them. And this fella here, he is a 3D print. This guy comes from Reptilian Overlords, but the style is pretty similar. I don't think you're going to mistake them for Games Workshop miniatures on the table, but they do help illustrate a point, and the painting is going to be more or less identical. So let's not worry too much about whether or not it's the right model. <laughs> so this one's going to be nice and quick. All of the paints will be listed in the description below as always. Let's get started. Now once my miniature has been cured and assembled, I've gone ahead and hit him with a primer spray of Zandri Dust. Reason being, it's going to work quite well as a base coat color for just about everything we're going to use. And if I do miss any details, then when we shade the miniature, it's going to be a grimy brown in the recesses, and that will be fine. So the first thing that we are going to do, even after priming him in Zandri Dust, is to get a little bit of Zandri Dust from the pot. Water that down just a bit, and I'm going to go ahead and very quickly jam this over the whole model, just to make sure that there are no bits that I've missed. This won't take very long at all. A brush with a nice big wedge tip is normally a good choice for this, because you can really work it in there. But yeah, we're not worried too much about this being perfect. Now, as with a lot of miniatures, it's going to seem like there is a lot of detail on here, and it might be quite daunting. But as with everything, just start from the bottom and work your way up. If you start from what is essentially the lowest level, so in this case, I'm going to start painting this fella's trousers, Every layer that we're going to paint over the top of that is going to help us tidy up as we go. So I'm applying a little bit of Mechanicus Standard Grey here, which is a nice basic grey. You know, <laughs> anything goes here, of course. And remember, too, it's probably easier to move your miniature to reach hard to reach spots than it is to keep angling your brush like crazy. Move this guy. Don't move this guy. Now, having just mentioned painting the lower points of detail first, this next one might surprise you because I'm going to paint in his teeth. Here I've got Screaming Skull, and I'm going to paint these now because if I go like that, and uh, you know, ordinarily we would be painstakingly painting in the teeth with a tiny, tiny brush and trying not to hit the rest of his face, by doing the teeth first, essentially we do that in reverse. We get the hard stuff out of the way, and then painting in the mask around these is going to be way easier. All right, we'll move on now to the leather parts, and for this I'm going to use Mornfang Brown. It's a lovely mid-tone brown, nice and warm, and it works super well for this. Now, what I'd suggest, ordinarily, I would also paint in the uh, strap on his gun in this leather color too. You know, try and keep that to the number of colors to a minimum, because uh, you don't need to be buying 800,000 of everything just because you know, you want to paint some miniatures. Uh, but today I am going to use something different there, just because I want to show you a color I really like, but I don't get to use very often. But I'd suggest, nine times out of ten, just paint that in leather too. So his boots, his pouches here, and I'm also going to paint in his mask. Now I might want to swap on down to a smaller brush for this, which doesn't have a funny little kink in the side, but I'm going to paint in his mask with this too. Now that will cover quite well. In one or two areas, you're probably going to need to come back and give it a second coat though, especially on the larger, flatter areas. But don't worry too much about that. It's nice and simple. I'm going to show you now that secret color I really like, and it is Iron Rack Skin, or Ionrach, if you're feeling particularly Shakespearean about it. I really like this because it's a pale beige with a hint of green. It makes a really good highlight color for uh, zombie skin, if you're ever doing that as well. And it's also, it's one of these ones which is really funky, because depending on what color you paint underneath, or what you shade it with, will quite significantly change up the color that it ends up being. So I'm using it here on this weapon strap, because I want a canvas color. And when we shade this later, it's going to look brilliant. Now I realized only afterwards that I should have painted in the little wrapper on his gun. I've used skeleton bone from earlier for that. So through the magic of editing, we'll just pretend I didn't miss that step. I'm going to paint now the wood on this guy. And ordinarily, I'd probably use Mornfang Brown. But because we've used that for the leather, 
I have here XV88. Now this is quite a yellowy sort of color, uh, but under a shade it's going to look pretty good. Now at this point it's time to start thinking about some spot colors, because at the moment he's all browns and grays and he's starting to look a bit bland, but we can have some fun with this. It will depend of course from miniature to miniature what area you want to do this, but he's got these pipes bursting out of his armor and this seems a pretty good candidate. What I'm using here, this is Moon Dust from the Army Painter, and it is a super light yellow, but despite that, it actually covers really well. Uh, something similar to this in the Citadel range would be Dawn Yellow, though Moon Dust has just a little more color to it, which I like. That's the reason why I'm using this one. Uh, but anything will go here. Um, I'm using yellow because it's going to draw the eye, it will be quite light but it's not going to overpower the other colors that we've used so far. Isn't that nice? I really think pick up Moon Dust sometime. If ever you're interested in painting yellow, beautiful color. Speaking of colors, we're going to move on to Lead Belcher and start painting in the metallic details. Now there are quite a few of these depending on how you want him to look. Uh, for example, he's got this big pack on his back here, and I'm just going to base coat the entire thing in Lead Belcher but also things like these little uh, buckles and straps and what have you. You can do them any old color you want, but Lead Belcher will work just fine. And then as a spot color for some of these details, we'll fall back to our good old reliable Retributor armor. I really like this one because depending on how you shade it, just like Iron Rack's skin, it will quite change up the finished color. We'll move on now to the last of the base coats, and that's going to be for the black. But instead of using black, I'm turning here to German Grey from Vallejo, which is a really dark, like it's an almost blue black. And I'm using this because, first of all, when we shade it, we're still going to get a little bit of variation in color. You know, even though it's very dark, we will still see some shading in the recesses. And secondly, look at that coverage. <laughs> Uh, you can stick to Ashen Grey or Abaddon Black if you fancy, but yeah, that speaks for itself, how easily that goes on. So I'm going to go around all of the bits I want to be black, and I'm also going to paint in his boots with this as well. It's a bit funny because he keeps blocking his own light in the camera, just that pose. Anyhow, let's come back once that stage is finished too. So there we have black, but not quite, and it's my favorite. Once that's dried, you can go around and do any last minute cleanup you need to do. So I have tidied up with a little bit of skeleton bone on one or two smaller details and fixed up some of the Zandri dust as well. And now we get to apply our shade. Now, no great surprise here. I have shaken up my Agrax Earthshade and really we're just going to bucket this on. So big old brush and make sure you are working it into the recesses, but apply this over everything. And once you are satisfied that everything's been covered over, we'll find a place to spot this, a little bit of sunlight, and we'll leave it for about half an hour to dry. Then at last, once that has dried, you're going to have something that looks like this. And to be 100% honest, for the bulk of an evil army, why not leave him dark and grimy? You know, base him up, put him on the table like that, he'll look fine. But, as always, we can take it a little further. And I really think there's only a couple of highlights where this is really going to go up to the next level. So I have here, this is Vallejo Model Air Steel. And you could stick to Stormhost Silver here instead if you wanted to. Uh, I just find this goes on a little more smoothly off of a brush. So you see I haven't got very much on my brush at all here. What I'm going to do is just rough up some of the edges, and I might have too much on my brush still, some of the edges of the black just ding things a little with the edge of your brush. You don't have to draw a perfect straight line. So if ordinarily you don't like highlighting, then this is a really good way to avoid having to do much of it. Just little rough edges here and there on that black. And as well, we'll do the same to the metallic details, which ordinarily you'll find you can just catch with the edge of your brush. After a couple of minutes, you'll have something that looks like this. And I really like doing armor chipping this way because it lets you highlight without having to worry about whether or not you've got a straight line on these things. It is a different skill and obviously edge highlighting traditionally still takes a bit of practice and it's worth learning to do. 
But if you have got a shaky hand, you're not 100% confident in that, then finding a different way of doing it doesn't look too bad to me, I'd say. I'm going to move on. I have Morgast Bone, and we're going to highlight just some of the uh, Zandri dust from earlier with a little bit of this. Uh, I tend to like this more than using something than Ushapti Bone, which is really, really bright by comparison. Morgast Bone, you'll need to thin it down just a little more than a layer paint would. But as it dries, it's going to settle quite nicely. Now, to be quite honest, that's going to be where I stop. Ordinarily, you could take this a little further. You might highlight his trousers with Dawnstone, or the brown leather details, use something like Scrag Brown to highlight those. But I don't think we need to. In particular, if you are looking at putting a fair few of these guys on a table, well, rush them out a little. Don't worry too much about the little things. I have done other videos where I've highlighted leather in that way, so, you know, it's not something that I haven't shown you before, I just don't think that it's necessary in this case. So what I am going to do is hit him with a matte varnish. I'm also going to pop a base on him, and I'll put the recipe for that in the description so you can follow along. But let's get a look at this guy once he is all complete. And there at last, our Traitor Guardsman is complete. And I think he really goes some way to highlighting an old belief of mine that the hardest part in painting is sometimes knowing when to say, I'm done, I'm finished, I like how that looks, and I don't have to do any more. Obviously, if you were going to go above and beyond, you know, you really want to push your limits on this one, they're actually a really cool range of miniatures. And being able to find all of these little bits and pieces, like the leather, or skull details, and what have you, to highlight and, you know, really expand on the look, well, that's cool and all, but you don't have to. And I think, yeah, that's a tough one to really nail down sometimes. Being able to say to yourself, nah, nah, I'm good. So, as always, thank you very much to Exit23 Games for the Lion Sound Equipment, as well as all of the wonderful patrons who are keeping me ticking in paints and glue, including my producers, Alan Nuttall, Kyrie Crawford, Trainboy, Jimmy, and Rod. Your support lets me do cool stuff like this. Any questions or anything, feel free to drop them in the old comments box below. My Twitter and Instagram are both linked there too. So, thank you very much for your time, one and all, and you all enjoy the rest of your day.